Hey, good afternoon guys. Tush coming at you. It's uh, Wednesday, October the 18th and we're just after uh, 5 p.m. in the afternoon. And we've got a beautiful fall day outside today. Way above uh, normal temperatures for this time of year. So we're really uh, fortunate out here to be still in uh, shorts. Anyway, uh, got a little bit of a mail call I've been uh, delaying. I've been a little busy for the last week or so. So I've got a few crates and boxes to go through, so I thought I would uh, take you through and uh, we'll go through the uh, the boring box first. This is just a box from uh, Centerline Alpha and uh, I'll take you through the contents of that box followed by this box here that's got a bit of a, bit of a story to it and uh, a thank you and uh, then we've got another bit of a story to go through on these two crates down here. So we'll come back once we get this first box cracked open. Alright guys, we have the box unpacked from Centerline Alpha and it really just contains what I need to finish off my 81 Alpha project. And I'd been waiting on this exhaust center section for a couple of months. And it's finally arrived. So we've got here, all the way from Italy. It's actually quite a big piece actually, I didn't think it'd be that big. Um, the car didn't have one on it when it arrived. It had been, uh, I think, lost on the way from Vancouver to Toronto. I'm not sure if it was torn off or fell off uh, on the transport truck on the way here, but regardless, I never received it with the car, so there it is. Uh, along with that, we've received the, uh, the gaskets for it, which is good. This one looks a little suspect. It looks pretty cheap, actually. I don't think I could find a cheaper part. This thing is so light. It almost feels like it's made out of plastic. Anyway, uh, there's that, there's that. And if you recall, I had some issues with some uh, fuel leaking because the fuel lines were so old on the car. They'd gone hard and brittle. And uh, when I replaced the fuel filters, for example, um, it basically just split the line. So we had some fuel uh, leaking um, from near back where the gas tank was and up front where the uh, speaker pump is. So. Got a bit of a new fuel line, metric fuel line, um, 13 millimeter and uh, seven and a half millimeter uh, fuel injection line, and obviously the braided line is the uh, 13 mil. So we'll put that to good use on the Alpha once we get that back out of uh, storage, probably most likely in the spring. So we've got this now. I'll put it into storage, probably in the trunk or in the back seat of the Alpha, just to get it out of the way, and uh, we'll move back on to another project. Alright guys, the next box I'm about to, about to unpack is uh, from Tuscaloosa. Uh, it was sent to me by a gentleman by the name of Rut, Rutledge. And uh, we know each other from uh, participating on a couple of forums um, for Triumphs. Uh, he's obviously a Triumph enthusiast. He's actually a, a British car enthusiast, I would think, uh, based on the signature in this forums. I know he's into uh, MGBs. I think he's got Bug Eye Sprite. He's had a number of Triumphs, including uh, TR6s and TR4s. Uh, I know he's just, uh, I think, putting some finishing touches on a really nice uh, British Racing Green TR4 that he's recently purchased. So, uh, anyway, we're going to unpack this box, and everything you see in this box was gifted to me by Rutt um, with the understanding that I pay it forward. Uh, Usually, you know, when parts are gifted to you for free, you're happy to get the parts and you're happy to pay the shipping. But when it came to paying the shipping, Rut said, just said to me, said, pay it forward. So that's why I intend to do anything that I don't use for this car or any help that I can give to any other uh, uh, Triumph guy out there that needs help, whether it's parts or, or advice or uh, a hand in the garage, um, I'm more than willing to help out. So anyway, we'll unbox this and see what we've got. All right, guys, here's a uh, overview of what Rut has sent along for me to help me with my uh, TR250 restoration. So uh, we've got a new a valve cover and a rocker shaft, so that'll be good for some spares. Carbon canister. Uh, we've got some valve cover studs, washer pump, a bunch of lights, uh, rear overrider lights, license plate lamps. Uh, these are front side markers. These are for the rear fenders, and I didn't have these, so I'm really, really happy to see these. These are the uh, rear fender side markers that go with those. He sent me a good core uh, speedometer, um, head gasket, manifold gasket, oil pan gasket, and we've got a used uh, wiring harness that looks to be in very good condition. 
and a few extra uh, brake lines, pre-bent brake lines. So I'll definitely uh, put those to good use. So thanks very much, Rut, and I uh, will definitely pay it forward as you instructed. So thanks again. They'll be put to good use. All right, guys. Last but certainly not least, uh, as you can see, we've got these two big crates here. And you probably noticed that they contain some fenders. So uh, I've got two rear fenders for the TR250, and we've got a passenger side front fender for the 250. And there's a bit of a story on how these came to be in my garage. <laughs> and I'm going to relate that to you now. So um, these fenders, the link to the sale of these fenders was sent to me by a gentleman by the name of John Bergman. These were on a Minneapolis Craigslist listing and uh, John is uh, one of my viewers of my videos and he had sent me a message on YouTube saying I think I found some fenders for you because he knew I was looking for fenders because mine were in such poor condition. Uh, they're over here they've had so much work on them and I was dreading having to use these to go back on my project because I was worried about things like you know the, this just horrible back here and the lines were going to be so screwed up that I thought I would be interested in probably finding some new fenders. These were in my mind not going to be really salvageable for the type of restoration I was doing. They might be okay for a driver but for my restoration I was a little worried about you know things like maintaining this body line here or putting so much filler on to hide this uh, gap where this is so poorly welded together. And like I said, I have a feeling that these fenders are actually off a of TR6 with some parts grafted to them. I don't even know if that's possible, but that's what I think has happened. You can see all the grafted pieces in on here. And the kicker on this one is the actual fender mount holes are even welded shut and new holes have been drilled. So something's going on with these fenders. So I thought I really need to look for uh, at least some new fenders. So uh, or new rear fenders. Uh, the one front I'd already done some work on, so the uh, the driver's side front I'd done some work on and managed to get it stripped and fitting not too badly. It does need some repairs, but it's something that I could work with. Anyway, I'm rambling a bit. So John, one day, uh, sends me the link to this Minneapolis Craigslist listing and says, have a look at these. So uh, they were listed on uh, for $750 US. Uh, they are purported to be uh, from a California car. Um, There's supposed to be very little rust on them and from what I can see in the crates, uh, I've had a real quick inspection of them, they do look to be in excellent condition for, uh, these are not 250 fenders, they are TR4 fenders. They do not have the holes drilled for the side lights, but they are pretty much the same fender. Uh, I do have to drill some holes, for example, for the uh, the trim strips, but for the most part, they are the same fender for the TR4, 4A, and 250. Okay, so I'll come back in a sec. So needless to say, I was pretty excited when John sent me this link because I had been looking for fenders for some time and wasn't having too much success up here in Canada trying to find some rust-free fenders. Most of the fenders I'd seen up here had had some previous work or rust repairs done to them. Some of them poorly. Um, some of them you could not find at all. It was very hard to find uh, rear fenders, for example, for a TR4, 4A or 250 up here anywhere. So I was even thinking of resorting to buying new fenders, some uh, heritage panels, which run about 1200 US a piece, somewhere around in that neighborhood. So with the conversion, I mean, 1200 bucks US, by the time I get that shipped up here, we're looking at $1,500 a fender. So anyway, 750 sounded like a pretty good deal to me. So uh, John set about to procure these for me. Um, and uh, that is a little bit of a story in itself. So I have to say John was uh, pretty persistent in getting these fenders for me because he first emailed me um, the link for these fenders at the end of August and we had a little bit of discussions about them. And uh, over the next two weeks he sort of pursued them. Uh, we thought we had lost them at one point because the gentleman had accepted a check from somebody else uh, and was waiting to cash it and waiting for the gentleman to pick the fenders up. So we thought for sure that we had lost these fenders and we were kind of giving up. 
Anyway, uh, a few uh, weeks later, I think the gent actually texted back to John and said, the fenders are still available. I've got the check, but he was having problems cashing it, and he was waiting for uh, the gentleman that had sent the check to send, I guess, cash or something like that. I don't know the whole story behind it. But anyway, John had the opportunity to go back and have a look at them and uh, purchase them. So uh, that was about two weeks later. So we're talking probably mid-September now. I think it was September 13th was the actual date that he actually uh, got these in his car and drove quickly away. I actually didn't have uh, too much hope that John would actually get these fenders as I had, um, I probably haven't told John this story, but I'll relate it to uh, my viewers now. Um, I had actually posted when I saw this Craigslist posting, um, I didn't want to put John through the all the hassle of going to look at these fenders, so on my Triumph TR250 and uh, Triumph TR6 Club, the six pack, I had posted a question if anybody was local to this uh, Craigslist ad posting that could go and look at the fenders for me. And uh, Irv Corey, a buddy of mine from six pack who I know, he uh, sent out a communication to a local member, uh, Tri Triumph owner, um, to see if he could actually uh, shed any light on these fenders and if he knew who was selling them. So he put me in touch with a gentleman by the name of uh, Greg Thompson and uh, Greg related to me that this gentleman that was selling these fenders was pretty well known in the area and he was pretty well known for actually having the parts but he was pretty well known for not necessarily wanting to sell the parts. <laughs> so uh, I've seen a few characters like that before in my own time so anyway like I said after I'd heard from from Greg I wasn't putting out too much hope that we'd actually get these fenders apparently this gentleman who has the fenders has about three chicken coops full of parts and uh, doesn't necessarily like to sell parts but I think he was getting some uh, pressure from his wife to do so apparently he was uh, getting a little bit older and uh, I guess the wife was putting some pressure on him to, to sell some parts so uh, and that's why they came up for sale and uh, as soon as John started getting the runaround and uh, you know saying he'd received a check from somebody else and, and that he couldn't cash it, I thought that John was getting the runaround and that we were not going to get the fenders and that Greg's uh, relation to me about this gentleman not really wanting to sell the things was sort of coming true. Anyway, well, that wasn't the case, so uh, John managed to pick these up, like I mentioned, on September the 13th, and uh, I'll finish the rest of the story. So after uh, John had uh, procured these fenders for me, then we started talking about uh, shipping. And uh, that's when John really excelled because, he, as you can imagine, look at the effort he's gone into creating these fenders up to make sure they don't get damaged during shipping. I probably would have just wrapped them in bubble wrap <laughs> and hoped they got there safely. But John spent, I don't know how many hours John spent, putting these crates together and bolting these fenders in here it's absolutely amazing and they've arrived you know totally intact um, the crates are, are are undamaged and I'm sure they got tossed around quite a bit uh, during transportation but anyway so John has spent I don't know how many days he spent constructing these crates buying the wood buying the screws buying the nails buying the bolts to bolt these fenders in actually coming up with a design for this so you can see that uh, John was pretty committed to getting these fenders to me in good condition. So, again, thanks for spending all that time and effort doing this, John, for me. Um, unbelievable effort to get me these, these fenders, so I can't thank you enough. Um, on top of that, um, John, if you, can, uh, if you can believe this, John doesn't know me from Adam. He knows me from watching my videos on YouTube. And John is a, also a Triumph enthusiast. He's, he's working on a TR3 right now. So, you know, he's got the passion as well. But... John doesn't know me, but yet he went into his own pocket, and uh, all said and done, by the time he'd purchased these, and obviously he's got you know outlays of cash for gas, he's got outlays of cash for materials to box these up, he's got outlays of cash for shipping them to me. So, all told, I think John, uh, out of pocket, without asking me for a dime initially, was over well over a thousand, I think about eleven hundred dollars out of pocket. Um, and you know he wasn't worried that he would ever get paid he, you know said take your time paying me whenever you, whenever is good you know so it's unbelievable that you know there's i guess that much level of trust too that you know i didn't even have to send him the money to initially purchase these fenders he just went and purchased them on my behalf in good faith so again thanks john um 
not a lot of guys would do that in this day and age, and uh, I really appreciate it. So I think I don't think I've missed anything. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uncrate them carefully and uh, have a good look at them. I don't think I've seen any better 50 plus year old fenders because obviously these are prior to the 250 which is 50 years old. As I mentioned these are probably TR4 or 4A fenders so they're minimum 50 years old. But check this out. I mean I've just peeled this undercoating off. Look at that. It's like pristine underneath the undercoating. Beautiful. I don't think you get any better than that. So I'm really really happy with this purchase. And again, they're going to fit so much better than the uh, aftermarket uh, production reproduction panels that are they're on the original tooling, but the old tooling is worn out. So the uh, even the new fenders require a lot of work. So it even has the original beading strip still left on the bottom of the fender back there. So looks really good, really good. Anyway, that's one down. We'll get the uh, pile of wood is uh, getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> Anyway, we'll have a bit of a bonfire later. Actually, I've got a wood-burning fireplace, so that'll be great kindling. Anyway, we're going to continue on getting the uh, strapping off the rest of the fenders, and I'll bring you back for one last shot. I'd say these fenders are definitely off a California car. I mean, this is where they rust out the worst along this flange here. I've just, again, brushed away some and chipped away some of the undercoating. And look at that. Perfect paint underneath. So, yeah, really, really happy. Again, the second rear fender is also in amazing condition. Still has the original fender washers here, and the rear is perfect as well. I'm really, really happy with these. So, anyway, on to the last fender. And sure enough, the front fender is in excellent condition as well. This is the part that really, really rusts out badly, and the cell repair panels for here and for actually up here, as you can see, this has got a little bit of surface rust, but it's extremely solid. That flange is awesome. Check out this at the front. Just peeled away this undercoating and it's like almost new paint under there. So really, really, really happy with these fenders. They're going to make a big difference to this project. So again, thanks very much, John, for going to the effort of going to get these for me. Uh, and obviously a huge effort to ship them to me. There's the pile. <laughs> so anyway, we'll go in and have a bite to eat and uh, probably get out here and uh, start cleaning in order to get this car back into the center of the garage so we can start working on it in earnest. So, just wanted to give you a quick update on the project. Thanks again, Rut. Thanks again, John.